I mean, one of the things, looking back on it, I think they should have made lectures a more substantial part of the process. And I think they should have made them compulsory, which they didn't. I think the lectures associated with the seminar you were taking should have been compulsory, mm. and I now don't see any reason why they weren't. And that would have helped, I think, to create a better balance. I think the key was the course assessment, which did keep it robust, I think, that it kept everybody working. And you were committed, and, you know, you had to work at the seminars, because two or three times during the term, you were going to have to write major things, which were going to be your degree. So I don't know, I, I, I think, as always with these things, you know, there were things that worked and things that didn't, and with any radical innovation, and indeed it did change. Mm. I think they changed the prelim course. I don't know what that's like now. But I loved the prelim course that we had. It was, we did, I think, uh, historiography, historical method, practical criticism, philosophy, and there was one other. And the philosophy was linguistic philosophy, Oxford linguistic philosophy. So it was all to do with language interpretation across the disciplines. And it was, you know, really a revelation. Yeah, because I imagine it was quite a big jump from secondary school. To yes, and it didn't follow any of the subject boundaries, that was the thing. You know, the practical criticism was not practical criticism of literary text necessarily. I mean, one of the texts, I can't remember them all, a lot of them were kind of social texts in the 19th century, but one was the Communist Manifesto, and actually doing a textual analysis. Mm. Now, that was quite revolutionary. You know, my conventional grammar school would not have dreamed of even having a copy in the library, let alone studying it as part of a mm. preliminary course. 